We could send the US Marines in there. It doesn't make a difference to where it is. You know, the area is so remote. No one can be in a position where you can actually you know, activate what is required to deal with what's there, this, then the, the scale of the machinery required to deal with it in the timeline that's, you know, what we're fighting against of trying to keep the boat in a position where it's, you know, it's, it's, it's very much, you know, recoverable. And, you know, like I've had three or four companies make contact with me and they're all, you know, you know, doing everything they possibly can to be as helpful as they can. At the same time, that the scale of what and the scope of the machinery that's required to deal with what we're dealing with, it doesn't get to where it needs to be overnight. Like it's, you know, we're talking about stuff having to come out of Mozambique or, you know, the, the, the east coast of Africa or, or you know, Madagascar or, you know, yeah. and you're dealing with offices that are in Holland and all kinds, you know, all over the place. So it's just very difficult to, you know, it's like one of these situations, you want to fix it now, 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 but the reality is you can't get what you need there now, now, now. It's, there's the process and unfortunately, while the process is happening, you know, we've still got nine guys sitting on a, basically in a sand pit out in the middle of the Indian Ocean that, you know, they are still the priority, you know, like, you know without a doubt, you know, getting them back here now and it's, you know, it's, a, it's a peace of mind right now to know they're all safe and they're, you know, doing everything they can out there with the boat as well. The, um, as, you know, it's like when you just you think it's a, a bad movie, you sit there and you talk to the Coast Guard last night, and they're telling you about everything from you know what we're dealing with as a, on a technical side, and then they're also asking me to warn the guys that the the reef is just riddled full of sharks and barracuda and God knows what else, and and plenty of you know they're telling me a story about you know a fisherman that you know they found out there that had been you know, basically mauled by a barracuda, and there you know there was barely much of him to deal with, and you're sitting there going, yeah, well, uh, next time I talk to Nico, I might remind him that if they are waiting out there in the reef keep their eyes open and there's, you know, it's just one of those things, it's unavoidable, they've got to get back to the boat and, you know, there's two metres of water so, you know, it's enough water for, you know, bigger, unfriendlier fish to swim in so it's just one other thing but, you know, it's you know, slightly irrelevant to what everything else is happening but it's just never as simple as it, you know, it seems to be. The, um, so, you know, they'll be coming back here, I just want to make sure, you know, even the simple things from just, you know, get them a few couple, you know, a few t-shirts clean pair of shorts, undies, bit of deodorant, toothbrush, bit all that, food. yeah, bit of, bit of food. <laughs> the, um, the, I mean, even that's, you know, the talk about human kindness, the, uh, the Coast Guard here, when they did the, uh, the fly over there yesterday, they literally, you know, parachuted in some just, you know, cans of Coke and chocolate and cookies and like, because there's, you know, like, I don't think people totally can appreciate how remote this place is. Like, the, the, when we say there's a Coast Guard station out there, it's an outpost that is literally the size of a tool shed in someone's backyard. It's on a sand spit and uh, two of the Coast Guard guys get to spend two months of their life out there on rotation you know, all year round. So the, um, you know, I'd say you know, this has been one of the biggest things that's happened out there for these guys in a long time. The, um, and there's probably six or seven fishermen that live on the on the sand spit as well. So I'd imagine it's a pretty interesting culture out there. Yeah, and these you know, our guys, they've been incredibly helpful. You know, the fact that Coast Guard were even kind enough to drop that out there, you know, I'm, I'm sure was you know, pretty well appreciated by the guys there. The, um, the, uh, yeah, yeah, we've got the sat phone there. That's our main source of communication. You know, there's obviously no communications left in the boat, but the um, the uh, the reality of it is, is that we've you know, it's amazing what we've been able to deal with with such you know, small resources in such a short period of time. You know, it's, it's been good in that regard. You know, at the same time, you know, uh, Alvi Medica, you know, they diverted themselves from what they were doing and you know, guys like you know, Will Oxley, Charlie, they did everything they possibly could, you know, which was, yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty touching. Oh. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, the leadership on board was, you know, it's, you know, it's coming through pretty strong as to what was going to have to happen. The, um, and they just, yeah, like, you know, we got to a point where, you know, they had to make a decision where the, you know, the boat was breaking up on the, on the reef underneath them and it was, you know, and terminal's not the right word to use right now, but the situation for them at the time was terminal. They had to, you know, it was not the best, you know, at, at the time, the best place was to stay with the boat. It, it was righted out until sunrise. You know, the Coast Guard could get out through the reef in their seven metre rib and come and collect them. That was always the plan. The, uh, the reality of it was it just got to a point where the boat was no longer the best place to be. You know, they'd done everything right. They'd deployed their life rafts. They'd tied them up to the correct side of the boat to make sure that they were, you know, if they did leave, they were leaving the reef in the right direction and not going into danger or anything like that, which still, you know, there's no real 
you, know, you can't say any part of it's actually a safe part of the operation. It's all, you know, you're dealing with some, you know, some serious shit, to be quite honest. The, um, and you've, you know, got, you know, eight other people on yourself that you've got to make sure are kept safe and, you know, and are hopefully, you know, keeping their stuff together as well. And um, the reality of it was is that, you know, sometimes through the phone it sounded like the, everything on board was incredibly composed and just, you know, it's like, geez, it doesn't you know, sound as nearly as bad as it is, and you, but you don't want to ever underestimate what's going on and not treat it with, you know, it's absolute code red. And then the, uh, the other part of it was, um, you know, once, you know, they chose to abandon, you know, like literally there was the ability to ring again and say, we're getting off the boat. So I knew exactly that they were getting off the boat and I was able to then inform race control if race control wasn't aware of some things and we were working together in the background on, you know, different phone lines and all that kind of stuff just to try and keep things as clear as we could. The, um, and then the, uh, basically from, when they chose to abandon, we uh, they were into the life rafts. Literally, 20 minutes later, another phone call saying that, you know, to be quite honest, we're uh, we're all good and we're standing on a rock. And it's just like, well, okay, what do you mean you're standing on a rock? And it's like, well, we've paddled, you know, whatever it is, quarter of a mile or whatever away from the boat. We're able to get on a rock that's above the reef. You know, we're a good you know, metre and a half above sea level. The, um, everyone's accounted for, everyone's safe. So, of course, that's a huge... Right, that's okay, that's great, but it's not a case of, you know, you know like high fiving everyone. You now, the whole situation is diffused. It's still the reality of it is they're standing on a rock in the middle of the Indian Ocean and got to, you know, it's still, you know, four o'clock in the morning for them, it's dark. You know, you've got you know, Alvi Medica in the lagoon side of the reef and they're, you know, doing everything they can for race control of reporting information and, you know, like what they did was just, you know, Highly credible right through, you know, like their, their procedure, everything was as you know, professional, as good as it could be. Yeah, and just actually just looking after the boys, you know, simple as that, and you couldn't ask for more.